Have you ever wondered how you're connecting to a server or device in another country over the internet when they're separated by an ocean? This is surely too far for a wireless signal to travel, so a cable must be used. In this video, we're going to have a look at the undersea internet cables or submarine cables that keep us connected and some of the issues they face. Please do subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps this small channel grow. Submarine cables have been used since the 1850s, with the first transatlantic cable being completed in 1858 to carry telegram messages from Ireland to North America. Obviously cables like this are not suitable for internet traffic and data, so another type of cable had to be laid under the sea to support the needs of the digital world. The submarine cables currently used for internet traffic are fiber optic cables. The individual glass fibers that carry data are around the diameter of a human hair. They of course have to be shielded, otherwise they'd be crushed by the pressure of being that far underwater. Some of the cables are up to 8,000 meters deep. Most cables near shore and shallow waters are buried between 1 to 2 meters below the seabed. This creates an extra layer of physical protection for seabed cables from trawlers and anchors, which may cause physical damage to the seabed cables. Cables are also protected by armour, a protective shield that prevents them from being damaged by marine life and underwater hazards. Cable armour is made from heavy duty materials like steel and armoured polyethene. This provides an extra layer of protection to the cables to survive in the deep ocean environment. The cables are typically the diameter of a garden hose once inside the armour. In extremely deep areas where there is no human activity, the armoured cables are not buried as them being disturbed is highly unlikely. Here is a map of all submarine cables currently in use. They are usually built to last around 25 years. The cables vary massively in length from relatively short ones such as the 131km cable between Ireland and the UK and the 20,000km cable known as the Asian America Gateway. So who actually uses these cables? In short, almost every internet user does. In fact, as YouTube servers are mostly located in the US, if you're watching this video from outside the US, the data is likely traveling to your router via one of the submarine cables right now. Over 97% of all internet traffic goes via cable, as satellite just can't match the speed and reliability of the submarine cable at the moment. One of the drawbacks of the entire world relying on these undersea internet cables is they can become damaged accidentally or intentionally. In Egypt in 2013, just north of Alexandria, men in wetsuits intentionally cut through the Southeast Asia Middle East West Europe 4 internet cable, causing speeds in Egypt to plunge by 60% until the line was repaired. This obviously had a massive impact on business and the general population. Another potential threat to the cables is sharks. In 2014, footage was obtained of a shark biting a submarine cable. It's thought they become confused by the magnetic field created by the high voltage that's carried through the cable, as this resembles those created by fish, although a shark attacking a cable does seem to be extremely rare. I have linked the video of the shark biting the submarine cable and the world map of the cables in the description if you'd like to look at them. Do you think we'll move away from submarine cables as satellite internet continues to advance? Please do subscribe if you've enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.